Hello, I've got a tiny Happy Model ELRS receiver. It's one of the ones with a little ceramic antenna. She can't see very well, I'll show you a close up of it. But it is absolutely tiny and it has no trailing antenna. The idea is you can put it internally in a really small model and it's just gonna sort of work and have, not have any bits floating around. Obviously, I'm interested to know what sort of range you'll get on this. It's not something you'd put in something you'd want really massive range from, but I figured if I put it in a toothpick, would I get all the range I want from something? The other thing is, of course, this is from Happy Model, which has produced some ELRS receivers. I don't have a Happy Model module. For 2.4, I have this Namimno model, so I'm really interested to put them together, because of course they just should work. Also, I have to say big thanks to Gaff, who's one of my Patreon supporters and runs the FPV shop Your FPV, which is in the UK. So if you're in the UK, don't forget to check your store out in case you want some receivers like this. Of course, the other advantage of these receivers is they're much cheaper than sort of a free sky equivalent and should go further. So let's find something to put it into and uh, we'll install it. I'll need to put my firmware on there so I can use my passcode, but we'll go for that and see how it works. So I've gone ahead and got this out of here because there wasn't much in it, just the actual receiver itself. And when you look at it in isolation, you can just see how tiny that is. And it's got that little itty bitty antenna, that ceramic antenna there. Just crazy. It doesn't come with any wire, so you need to supply some bits there yourself. Um, anybody that's built a quad before should have oodles of wire kicking around, so that's not the uh, much of a problem. It has got some clear heat shrink on it. You should just sort of notice that shining. So that just leaves these uh, solder terminals exposed. Now when I first looked at these I thought you know what it doesn't even tell me what's what but on closer inspection and I'll see if I can show you if the camera's going to focus you can hopefully just make out in the center it says RT5G so receive transmit 5 volt ground. Uh, of course you can find schematics for this on their web page and check it that way just to be sure but uh, yeah obviously we have to be a little bit careful about soldering there because we don't want to burn the heat shrink. I would always prefer to have the heat shrink and do it myself but this should be fine. So in terms of what to put this in I sort of looked in my cupboard for bits and pieces that I haven't flown in a while because generally the stuff I have out is the stuff I like to fly more. So I thought I need to look at something that I wouldn't fly because it wasn't performing in the way I wanted it to. I found this old thing. This is the Isheen Red Devil. Reviewed it a while ago and you know, it flies okay, these little toothpicks are all shaky but good fun to fly. This has one of those crazy B F4 boards, which weirdly, um, normally as a reviewer I get all the stuff that breaks. Everybody else is saying their crazy B boards broke. Mine never had a problem. That's got an SPI receiver on board and this would drop down to like 30% RSSI, like really scarily low within like less than 100 meters of myself. If I went behind me, it would lose signal. And this hasn't got much room, but there's a tiny bit of room just at the top of that. And I wanna know, could I shove this in there? I want to know if a tiny internal receiver running ELRS, I say it's an internal receiver, it's an internal receiver because I'm gonna put it inside, <laughs> that's all. Will that outperform um, 2.4 SPI? I mean, it must do. I'm not expecting any great distance there, but I, I, I think this is a pretty good test about seeing these sort of things, which you've got to say must be intended for sort of whoops or toothpicks and stuff like that. How's it going to fly inside there? What sort of range are we going to get? So I think I've got the pins to do that in there. There's not many spare, but I think we've got one spare uh, RX and TX is what we need and we'll find ground and 5 volts somewhere. So let's hook this thing up and see what we get. Okay, that's my connections done with some really <laughs> tricky bits of soldering. So I did check that all with a multimeter before we went. You can see that's flashing away now. Now on this little PP receiver, it doesn't have inbuilt Wi-Fi. So I'm going to try and flash via a Betaflight pass-through. What I've done is over on Beta Flight Configurator here, I've gone ahead and I've set up my UART2 as Serial RX. I've gone and then changed from uh, SPI receiver to CRSF and I've added telemetry. So if we open up the ELRS Configurator, uh, we've got the PP via Beta Flight pass through, manual device selection, 
it's going to be that and yeah let's see what happens let's try build and flash Think OK, it's doing upload. We're getting a rapid flash from the receiver. It says it's worked. Cool. OK, this looks good. Popped the, uh, the Mimno in this radio here. We've got a solid light, and if I move the sticks, you will see movement. So that looks good. I'll uh, fit that back inside, and then we can have a look at how this thing flies and what the range is like now. And here is that receiver fitted in there and hopefully you can just see just under there that is the little ceramic antenna just sort of poking out sort of just sitting on top uh, that you can see there these are a right pain to work on you've got to have like octopus hands to try and line everything up without bits dropping on the floor this is going to be slightly untested i had to update beta flight this was like um the beta of like 4.00 so i've put it on the latest 429 so i could take advantage of all the sort of inbuilt telemetry it would get from CRSF. I've done a quick hover in the garden. It doesn't look like it needs any tuning, so hopefully that'll go okay. Hello, here we are for testing. This is my first bit of flying since my knee surgery. I don't think I've flown anything for about two months. And uh, I chose this spot, particularly so I could walk here in about 20 minutes and the knee's holding up okay. Secondly, it's because where I flew this before, and it's gonna be a really easy check to see how RSSI works. I mean, it's got a lot more overgrown actually. If I put it down in there, there's, there's no chance of me getting it back. Uh, not with this knee. And it's a bit more overgrown down there. The, the trees have overgrown a bit more. So it'll be interesting to see how the signal holds out. Hopefully the VTX will as well. And uh, I remember how bad it was flying behind myself. Just not even to the end of that bit up there. So it'd be an interesting test. A couple of notes on the radio. I'm obviously using the TBS Mambo with the uh, Nimimbo, no? with the Namimno module. God, I hate that word. Um, I did double check on the ELRS forums, just see if there was any gotchas on the Mambo. And they said, using the current Freedom TX build, it's limited to 250 Hertz. Interestingly, when I turned this on, it came up at 500 Hertz. And even in the OSD, it told me the LQ was 7100, which is 500 Hertz, but um, it's not supported. So I've, I've manually put that down to 250 Hertz. So you should see the six as the power, and then hopefully the 100 not falling too far below in the uh, the actual LQ part. Of course, I'm not intending to fly any great distance. I just want to see if it'll get, you know, to the end of there, which you can't really see, out there somewhere, and uh, back and basically replace an SPI receiver. So let's give it a whirl. I've only got a few batteries. The wind's up a little bit, which is not great on these little toothpicks, but let's see how it goes. Okay, we're off and flying, and my first impression was, oh my God, how bad is this camera? This is the old uh, Calyx EOS 2, which is fine if you've got bright overhead light. As soon as that sun drops and it's shining in the camera, you get this awful darkness uh, on the ground, which is just, I'm almost blind flying here. I'm just kind of feeling my way through, seeing if I can find the end. And I've decided that's about the end and what a relief to turn around and I was lucky not to get taken out by that little branch. But the difference when you're going where the sun is sort of shining behind you rather than in front of you is such a difference. I mean, these these cameras have been superseded by things much better, but people still put, you know, these crappy cameras out on some of these uh, cheap uh, builds. Uh, I'm going behind myself now, which was a real problem before. And once again, we get the odd little drop to like 98 and then it jumps back to 100 on the LQ. So it's kind of like, yeah, I can't make a dent in this one. I can go all the way down and there's not a problem. But to illustrate this, I just found some old footage, the original test of this one with the SPI receiver, which I'll show you here. So we here we are in July 2019 and we've got much better conditions for the camera. But look at that RSSI. It's just dropping like a stone. I'm right there facing sideways on, trying to get the best position. But you can see I'm in the 30s, just going around this tree. I was worried about losing the signal. It's fair to say that SPI receivers do run a much lower RSSI than sort of a regular FreeSky receiver. A regular FreeSky receiver will start panicking below 40% or below 40, it's not really a percentage. These things will go down to, you know, something like 20, but it's just so unpredictable about when they're going to lose the signal completely. I 
did not enjoy flying with that RSSI that low. It just freaked me out. Well, two things to note there. Firstly, and flying that way, oh my God, was this camera useless? I just, it was completely dark. I was flying into everything, but I just wanted to get to the end, see what would happen. And you see that the, the LQ maybe dropped to 99, 98 very slowly or very occasionally, but nothing happened. Behind me, not a problem, stayed at 100. Um, I couldn't even see myself trying to land and I feel very out of practice. I felt like a real beginner trying to fly this thing, but um, I've got another battery, so let's try flying above the trees a bit and just see if we can get a bit further. Hopefully I'll be able to find my way back because my, this is terrible. I think this is an EOS 2. It's not very good. Anyway, let's try again. Right, off we go, let's try this out. I should explain, I've put the three levels of RSSI on the screen here. The top one is the LQ, and this, this is the one you really need to think about. Six is your rate, this is 250 hertz, and 100 is the link quality, so it's, it's all going well. You'll notice here, I start flying out, and I've got seemingly a problem with the VTX. If I turn around, if you look at that thin little alleyway, that's where I am, and of course, because I'm a, close to those trees, that signal's being blocked and as we go out above the tree line the the wind increases much more significantly so I need to think about how I'm gonna uh, line myself up to try and correct to keep myself in line um, anyway the second one down is the DBM range of RSSI or your, your DBM signal and for me I don't understand it now people will say well you want minus whatever and that's a good signal no it doesn't work for me so I'll probably get rid of that finally you've got the actual RSSI indicator below that which is um completely useless as far as i'm concerned now i mean it's it's a really odd little rate um and this is it it's in terms of crossfire or elrs or anything like this ignore everything except the lq because the lq tells you everything um, i'm flying out now i'm sort of correcting against the wind and it's looking a bit better you'll see our lq is occasionally just dropping three or four points mostly it's at 100 and you'd kind of expect this um, on a regular receiver because you're in line but don't forget this is a tiny little thing which is completely buried inside this little model but um, I'm starting to run a bit low of power now so I'll come back I've got one more battery so let's try this one more time okay last battery and I've put myself slightly over one side so I figure I get the best coverage you can see that the trees are pretty tall there so I need to be up high and in line with myself otherwise that signal is going to cut off on the VTX but let's try and get as far as we can on this one because this is my last battery I thought yeah let's go for it the signal seems to be holding up really well my, my only worry was the VTX what I wasn't particularly looking at was the voltage indicator which as you notice has already dropped to 10.2 these batteries are probably not very good and they haven't been used for a while um, I've got out to a reasonable way I'm just turning back just to make sure I'm still in line looks good so I'm going to carry on going forwards again not noticing my battery level it's it's a bit scary when it drops under 10 that's the only problem and I only just notice it here and I'm like oh I'd better go back this is a fair old distance um, it's not amazing distance but again we, we kind of run out of battery to do anything else I'm kind of flying back on fumes here and you can really see how how strong that wind is the amount of uh, lean I'm having to put in there but yeah once again that LQ is is barely moving and we're not on full power of on the module and we, we could also be on a, a much slower uh, rate and get further distance that way so this thing is doing just amazing it's it's like a magic thing the fact I've got this fitted in this tiny little model and this model is able to sort of outfly every range I've got uh, based, based on the battery running out is just scarily good so aside from having the battery run out before I got as far as I could get magical it's just there's a tiny receiver stuffed in there and it can go as far as this one can ever take it as I said this is not the thing you'd put in your big model and say look I can fly as far as I want because it will run out of range because it hasn't got like a nice antenna but for your whoops and toothpicks and things like that where the SPI receivers were really sort of letting you down these are absolutely they're just magic black magic I don't know how they do it full signal anywhere you can go you can completely outfly your video signal which is what you want because as your video starts to degrade you want the signal to be able to turn around and I already know there's flight controllers out there and coming out which have inbuilt ELRS 
receivers and that's going to be a bit of a game changer on these little things because you won't have to worry about range anymore. Um, another note on this one, I mentioned about the power I was using on the radio. The Namimno module here can put out up to a watt of power. I was using 100 milliwatts there because I thought that's generally what most people use and that's what a lot of modules can do. This can go higher because it's got a fan. If I boosted that to a, a, a thousand milliwatts or a watt and I, I put the uh, data rate down so it do like 100 hertz or lower then it would go even further but of course I wouldn't be able to go anywhere because I'd run out of battery but when you're dealing with being able to fly long range these are things you can take into consideration. So yes, this little PPRX from Happy, Happy Model, thoroughly recommended. That's not the only one. Uh, the Mimno, who of course make this module, make a similar one. This one's not quite as small and it's got the inbuilt uh, Wi-Fi chip. And one of the other Happy Model ones do as well. Uh, it comes with the wires. But again, very small. You can stick it inside something. It's got that little tiny ceramic antenna. So just imagine what will happen when I actually use one of the proper ones with the antenna. And that will be coming up. So I've just... Uh, while my, I've been off with my knee and I've been able to sit at a desk and do stuff, I've been building things that have been on the desk. This is the Aquila frame from uh, STP and Rush FPV. And I've just finished this. It's a very sort of lightweight, thin five inch quad, which is built on sort of three inch quad parts. It's got a GPS. Um, it has got the 2.4 Namimno uh, ELRS receiver there. So that'd be fun to test. At the same time, I haven't forgotten that the Mambo radio has an inbuilt tracer. So I've also put the Tracer 69, which is, you can just see it as this little white thing there, which is the combination VTX and tracer receiver in this. This is my old Holy Bro uh, Copies 2. I say old because it was running 314. That's again been updated and quickly test to hover in the garden. So both of those will be coming up as soon as I can get out, of course. Now, I'm more mobile and I can fly. The weather's come in and it's windy and rainy, but we'll be coming up soon with this, enjoying this radio. It's uh, it's really quite good. Anyway, thanks once again to Gaff from Your FPV for supplying the receiver. You can find links down to his store below. If you're in the UK, don't forget to check it out. And I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.